Hi, I'm Daniel, I'm a sleep physician, and today I want to talk to you about deep sleep or slow wave sleep and REM sleep, how they're often confused and why that may not matter that much. So uh, what I hear very often in clinic is somebody telling me, ah, I just don't get that REM sleep, you know, I, I seem never to get into that REM sleep, you know. Or somebody who says, I had a sleep study, like, like Katie from a few episodes ago, I had a sleep study and I, I didn't have any REM sleep. Now, what people uh, want to convey when they say that um, is that they never get that like, you know, consolidated, like solid, juicy, nice sleep. Uh, but they always stay in this kind of superficial, um, state where they're kind of half awake, aware of what's going on in their surroundings. And um, there is a lot of confusion there, meaning people generally uh, think of REM sleep as a, a, a deep sleep that is, you know, refreshing, rejuvenating. In fact, REM sleep is the total opposite. In REM sleep, your brain is actually very, very active. It's a state where we dream a lot, and if you look at brain waves comparing wakefulness, REM sleep, almost indistinguishable. Now, deep sleep, on the other hand, very different from wakefulness. Uh, there's synchronized activity in the neurons in the brain, which gives it this nice delta waves on an EEG, you know, when you look at, 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 on a sleep study. And in, in slow wave sleep, delta sleep, deep sleep is that kind of rejuvenating uh, sleep that happens in the early part of the night. Usually within the first four hours, you have almost all of your deep sleep. The last, you know, three hours, let's say, uh, is when you have most of your REM sleep. Now, uh, what's interesting with uh, deep sleep and slow wave sleep is that the body really seems to want that meaning. If you sleep, let's say seven hours, then maybe 25% is deep sleep. But if you're sleep deprived, and let's say you only sleep four hours, then almost all of that is gonna be deep sleep. Like the body does anything it can to get that deep sleep. That's why we think deep sleep or slow wave sleep is really important. Um, now, I said before why this doesn't really matter or may not matter. What I wanna say with that is, um, although it is really interesting to look at a sleep study, uh, of somebody that has insomnia or, or another sleep condition. It's interesting to note how long it take, took somebody to fall asleep, exactly how many minutes they slept, how much REM, slept they, REM sleep they had, etc. It virtually never changes management. Meaning if you see somebody that has insomnia, you know, difficulty sleeping, and for some reason a sleep study was done, and you note that they had no REM sleep or a lot of REM sleep or uh, very little slow wave sleep, it doesn't really change how you're going to manage that patient and management as we talk, talked about before is really uh, is, it should really be cognitive behavioral therapy that's like the number one treatment for insomnia and uh, and on a final note here i want to say for for people uh, with trouble sleeping insomnia that do not have like sleep apnea symptoms like snoring and choking in sleep and inability to stay awake during the day uh, you rarely need a sleep study, it doesn't really help. Um, uh, you know, there's this notion out there uh, that a sleep study is a test that kind of examines every aspect of sleep and that it's really helpful for anybody that's seen in a sleep clinic. Not really. Sleep studies are mainly, I would say, like 97% of the time just to look for obstructive sleep apnea. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any problems with sleep, questions, comments, uh, uh, leave me a comment or email me at insomniainsight.gmail.com and I hope to see you back here very, 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 very soon. <laughs> Bye.